Hello and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So today, going to look at the aspect that maybe you've got a bit of this stuff. Tree wood, yeah, has a look. Good time of year to be cutting up in the UK because temperatures are dropping, so it'll season nicely, hopefully not crack too much. At this little bit of time, you can see it's got a little bit of a crack in the end. Nothing too drastic. It'd be nice to convert it so we can use it to something. And that's joy of maybe doing your home woodwork session. You could actually take something like this, plank it into whatever size you want. And that's the optimum word. If you've got a good size bandsaw, you can machine your own material so you could use it using, in reality, what most build class says, firewood. Okay, so you can take some lugs, rip them down, and maybe make something out of them. Jewelry boxes, turning blanks, whole range of things. We've done lots of stuff over the years. Ben had lots of material we cut up like this. So have some holly, sycamore, things we can't buy easily, but given the optimum materials to work with, maybe for the pyrography. And we can cut it to the sizes that we require. Not one inch thick. You can have something thinner, thicker, whatever you like. So we're going to look at that aspect. Now, first problem normally with a log on a bandsaw, it's not very stable. For some weird reason, trees don't grow nice and square. We've got funny shapes. If I try and draw a line down this and cut it, it's going to wobble as we cut it. The force is coming down through the table, going to help move that log. It's going to rock about. And you won't get a straight line. Next thing, even if you're trying to push it and you're fighting that action, you won't get a straight. It's amazing how much you'll deviate off. The other thing that will play a part with that, most trees actually grow with a twist naturally. So if you try and cut it, it will pull it a little bit with that twist. So how can we convert this nice, easily, safely, that's an important one, to give you what you're after? Okay, so what we're going to do is build a really simple jig. You can use a router, some cutters, some plywood, a few jig making materials, nothing outrageous and then we're going to cut the log in half and then break it down to smaller components so I can actually season it quicker so on the bench I've got a piece of plywood okay nothing special this is I think 20 mil ply on here I've drawn out some marks ready if I tilt it up a little bit I think Ben let's go down which one do you want there you can see some lines on here so these lines come across so the one here got a little stir into gel that's the guide rail line this is my cut line I've also got a center line which is where my finger is there that comes down the middle of the board so I've marked it out so the lines come across just to give me a guide of where things are so why do I want those lines because we're going to route a groove in so we're actually going to use two router cutters we're going to use a standard sort of straight cutter that's oh six mil diameter then we're going to use something along the lines of what I would class as a keyhole cutter. Okay, I think you can probably see that. Let's see if we can bring it in a bit. There you go. So that's got that head. Why do we want to use the keyhole cutter? Because then we can use some knockdown fittings, sort of T-bolts, that will fit into the slot after. So real simple to do. Now the nice thing with making this as a jig is once you've made it, it is there, ready to go. You can use it repeatedly. Okay, so first thing we want to do, just going to set the router up. So we're going to go with that 6mm straight cutter. Put it in, just turn it round so it's a bit more adaptable for me. And that there, get the spanner in. Just want to undo slightly. I don't want it bottom them out in the bottom of the router. So I've just moved the cutter because it's quite a long 6mm cutter. Tighten it up. First thing done, that was easy. I want a guide rail. Um, there's a number of different ways you could do this, so we can go to a standard sort of guide rail. I've got my line on here, so it's GL, let's move things out of the way, get the glasses, you want to be accurate, Neil. I'm going to put that on. Got my down thing there, let's move things back. So I can hold this down on the path board. I'm going to come to the top side of that line. And people say you're going to work to a pencil line. For what we're going to do, this isn't going to be overcritical. Make it look fussy there. Right, okay. So we've locked that off. So I'll clamp in place. I can wiggle the board. Let's clamp that down a bit further on our clamp that's just out of the picture here. You can't quite see it, I don't think. Let's just see if I can bring it in. Oh, blind spot. Okay, so what we're using, let's show you. Bench clamps, which you guys will have seen. I've got one of these just in a T-track on the bench. I can just clamp that down, 
just to hold it quick and easily. So that locks things in enough for what we're going to do. Up in there, a bit of pressure, good. Now I've also got on the bench here, on the board, a stop point, there and there. Okay, there's two lines. Once we've machined these and routed it, you'll see what we're doing. I'll hold it up, you'll be able to see it a bit better. So we set up our router, the straight cut. I'm just going to look in from the end now, because I want to get a depth point of how deep I want to come down overall. That's maximum, so I can set that up. So I'm just using the turret stop now, bring that round. Maximum depth of cut is that. We don't want to do this in one heavy go, so we're going to come halfway. That's good. First bit done. I can lie the router down its side, going to plug it in. So let's bring the cable towards you guys. We can go into the auto start hoover we've got under the bench. Put the extractor on. So we're set. Cutter at the moment is overhanging the base. I've just got to change a few things. I want my work goggles and the earmuffs. Okay, so we're going to create a little bit of noise now. Take that cable, we'll hold it out the way. On the gap in there. Just looking at where we are. So we're coming across. That one. We can come back out. I can find my lever. We go down, fold up. Other side from my start line, which is there. Pull the lever down, I can hold it. Bump. Can't see more on this one, so it's down to my stop. Okay, one done. So at the moment we've got a straight cut. Haven't gone all the way across the middle of the board. Got a line, comes down, breaks into this one. Got to repeat that exactly the same. So I'm just going to move the board forward a little bit. See where I can get everything to hold it in place just to fix it down just going to repeat that cut again so exactly the same thing further up again position it on my line guide rail clamp it down to there so we're going to do exactly the same again To the stop point. Things wiggling about. That's good. Things like we're down. Over to our start. All the way across. So we've got one more to do. So we've got to turn our board round just to make it more accessible. Set the clamp back up, just lock things back in place again. This one's a little bit trickier because it's wrong side. Right at the cross 
out from there. Okay, so hard work bit done. Let's just unplug the router. Still got to do the other cut yet. So at the moment, if we go back to, I think main camera will probably look better. We've got our slots either side, not coming all the way in. Reason for having two nearer size of the log. Different diameters, different lengths we can play around with. So this is allowing me to be a bit varying on what you're getting. I can adjust the jig quite easily. Okay, so first bit done. So we're going to change that router cutter. So just take the hose off. We've already unplugged the router, that's paramount. Get that plug out of the way so I don't tread on it. Undo, we've got our push button. Get the spanner in. A little bit more. Oh, it's that double lock, that's important. Take the cutter out. We're going to change it to that keyhole cutter. Put that one in. Tightened up. Move a few of the path dog bits about again a little bit to have a bit more support further back. I'll clamp back in. That's done. Next thing, whilst it's still unplugged, I'm just going to check our depth. We want to be cutting down to where we were previously. That'll do. So I've set that up, lock it off. Check we can get down to there, double check it. That's good. I'm going to come forward just a little bit so I can get that guide rail in without hitting the path dog this side. Guide rail. Now, I said we can work just that pencil line as long as we can line up with by sight. That looks good. I'm going to just change and double check it. Got quite a high powered light above me. It creates a bit of glare. So it'd just be nice to do that and double check. That's good. So, on this, I mean, the outer back in, hose back in place. Plug things back in. Okay, good. We can start again. Well, nearly. One thing to add, got to get the earmuffs. So I put them back on. Turn the cast out a bit. We can lower the cutter down to our bit. Just checking where we are. No, this isn't taking too much cut wheel. So I'll turn it off. I don't want to pull it up. I want to stop it in that position. Just pull our hose back through a little bit. Now this goes against the rules of routing. Really, I should be going left to right. But actually, we've got a small amount to cut either side as the undercut. So we can actually go from there. Things on tear for go against that side well. In. Stop it. Let's stop. And back out. So we got our T rail. Let's just have a quick look. T bolt will fit in. That's good. There's no reason it wouldn't have. Then we're going to bring it forward again. Just going to repeat those. So set things back up. Clamp it down. Oh, I need a path dog in there a little bit, which I've come a long way forward. Something just to hold it. So again, working on that pencil line. Pretty accurate for this. Enough to do. We've got our depth already. So we're coming in. I'm simply using my thumbs. Pushing on the base of the router, not moving too quick. 
down to our lunch. Turn it off. So my left thumb's pushing in line where the guide rail is. Helping keep it locked in place. Got to turn the board right round now. So undo there. that back in place. Set the guide rail back up. Get our position. Just aim for my pencil line. That's better, got some tension on it now. Back in with the router. Just double checking where we are, that looks good. Do this side first, now we've had a look. Yeah, looking at where we are. Uh, bring it over. Back on again. Again, looking where we are, going to our point, turn it off. Okay, so put the router up on the bench. Those I think can go back out the way for a minute and unplug the router. Undo the guide rail, put them out of the way, want it back in a second. Take a few things off, that's better, right, okay. So all we've really done now, and I expect, I think, oh Ben, you were on two there, let's have a quick look. So you can see the slots up through, we'll go to the main camera in a minute. Other thing you probably see, I don't know if I can show you that on the other camera over in here. Ooh, reach for something else, that's the T-bolt, they're going to fit into that groove. Can't be pulled out. How easy is that? That's not difficult, is it? So we've got overall thing. You can see, how does that cut a lug? A couple more bits just to go. Nothing drastic. So, underside, this bit's a bit more optional actually. Um, the advantage of doing what I'm going to do now, it means it's actually nice and repeatable. So I want our guide rail back. I've already got a line down. I'll put a position of the center line, because you're going to go, how, how do you get a line down there? How do you know? I've got my centre line of where I want to be down the board. Right, uh, through. That's the line of where we're going to cut. So I've measured from the bandsaw to where the T-slot is. So in other words, from the blade to the T-slot on the bandsaw we've got here is that amount. Hang on, let's get there. And I think from memory, by spinning back round. So my blade point is here, T-slot, edge of it's over there. So I want to lay that on there, so on here, come down the edge of, so where you can use guide rail again. And this you don't have to have, you could actually run this off the fence, have your bandsaw. The only problem I can see with running off the fence is you'll change your cut point. Whereas actually doing this way, you've got your same cut line, you're not going to vandalise the board as much. So I've locked that down on that line, I've got the measurement. And then what am I going to use? Some aluminium T-bar, which will fit into the T-slot on your machine. Just checking which way round it's going to go on there better. Let's go that way, I think. Now I can use the guide rail clamp as something just to hold it. Check it's back on the board because I want to put some screws in this. So we'll bring those down. I can probably bring that one up. So I can use that guide rail just to hold things nice and firmly whilst I do the screws up. True. 
Put one in there. And I've got a couple down here. Checking things line up. I've got two bits. You can make a wooden one possibly. See that stern, that's just off just a tiny bit. Hoping that will go. Okay, so I put a guide rail back out the way. Uh, it falling over. So I think if we go to main camera again now, we get a better idea of where we are. We've got strip down in there. My board down through here. Where our slots in. Okay. So I think for a second, let's just move the log off the bandsaw. Just to get a quick look on where this is going to go. So this will allow me to set that T-slot and go in. All right. So I don't have to have the fence in play or follow that T-slot. I've also got little adjustment screws on this one if I wanted to wind in and out, take up the slack. We'll have a look in a minute. All right, so that will go in. So we're up to that point, we've got our board. Um, making things cluttered now though. Can never have enough space. So let's go back into play then. So on here then, what do we want to go on our board? I said you there are a few more components. Go make up some blocks. So my blocks are 125 to 65 with that long taper. Okay. 35 mil wide. Doesn't have to be there, it can be whatever you like, okay? Got a hole here that comes all the way through. So that is it's probably seven mil I probably drilled that because I want these to pass through. Definitely six mil because these are M6 threaded. So these are T-bolts. They go through there. They will come all the way up through. The bottom edge will go through. You can see that. Then the other hole up on here, I put in, I think they're clear. They're not a T-nut, but they're threaded. That funny little thing there. That bit there has a screwdriver head, so I have to drill that hole out bigger. I've screwed it in, you can see the slot. So in other words, our bolt will screw into that. Now, those sort of things, we do a metric jig making kit. So I've got a new one down. Ben, you better just have a look on camera. One, I think it's probably gonna be okay, which is this thing. Lots and lots of routing jig fits. So the T-bolts, that sort of thing are in there, fantastic. Um, regularly go and raid this. The, the, uh, the problem with this one, it's nice and sealed. I don't want to open it. Why haven't I got the one we've used? We've used all the bits out of it over a period of time, so I'm getting short. So I thought I'd get the right bits and show you. But this is nicely sealed, but lots of nubs, T-bolts, loads of things for your outing making stuff. So, our little block. That's not difficult to make. Most of your money's there, drill a hole. T-bolt threaded in the bottom. This one, I can tighten up. I think you'll see what I'm doing. Let's put it into our thing. Let's find out how much lower it'll be, a bit more. I can twist it round in there. It needs to move too much. A bit tight, still bring it back. I want it to slide. Got a little bit of play on the front now, so let's just have a look. So I want it to be able to move forward and back across the board. That's not bad, okay? So by twisting it round, I can adjust the depth. The other one is slotted all the way through, as we said. So let's get that back in the right position. I'm just going to move, I'll put that in and then show you where we are with that. Bring on to the bench. So front one, I can lock the height in so it doesn't lift out. Back one, I've got to lift up, put it in. We have washer and knob. So this is now adjustable. We need four. I don't have to have them all in the same position. We're now long. Just looking at the length of the piece of cherry we've got. So I'm going to bring this one up to here. So it's prepped. One in over there, if I can find a bit. Might need to undo. Thread them in. Oh, still tight. better and do uh, back one can't quite see where I am put it in 
So now I've got to work down, and I think what we'll do, let's just pan this back a little bit now, that's better. Come up to there. This is the front of the jig. So that's going on the bandsaw in a minute. Again, just adjusting those screws so they fit the slot I've just done. Now then, check their move. Okay. How much movement do I get on the front? Not a lot. I don't want a lot of lift up and down on the front. Other side, just doing, again, adjusting. Half turn. That's better. Undo the back one, because I've got them nice and tight to stop things falling apart. Locate it. So these are all slideable. So Ben, I think let's just have a look on camera one again. So you can see where we've got things there, if I can hold it. On here, everything there is movable across that frame. All right. So that's quite an important part. We can go in and out. So what we're trying to do in a minute, and I'll put it on the band for in a second. If I lift the log up, I'm not going to put it on with this one, but I can actually set the log into a position in here now. Okay, I can start looking at the log and going, where do I want it? Which we'll do in a minute. But I can move the blocks in to go either side to support it. You've got that V action, it will stop things moving. So I can move all four independently to make it a lot more stable. Okay, let's just move. I think I'll bring it back just that little bit. Okay, so you can see where we are now with the board, the blocks, how they're going to work. Quite a simple little thing. All right, so I think we're going to go set the bandsaw up, get this bit done. First thing I want to do, I'll put this on the bandsaw. We've got to do that setup cut now, which is going to come down through the board, going to come down level pretty much almost with the end line. We've got a little bit we can go further. All right, so let's turn the machine on. All right, so what we're going to now do do that straight cut down for there. We're following those two bolts or the two slot on the bandsaw. Down through. That'll do us. Let's stop. Okay, going to feed it back through. Another thing I've got in here, a couple of roller stands just to help support it. So now we're going to set the log up. So I'm just moving that back so I've got position to support it. Back a little bit more. Okay. Ooh, now we go weightlifting. Got to set the log on. Got to start to look at where things are. So I've got a line now as a saw cut. I'm going to be just off the heart. I've got a large crack, which you can't see. So you'll see it in a minute. So let me just bring this up because it's got to come up anyway now. Just enough to go through there. Now I'm just going to bring this forward just fractionally. We're a long way from setting up. I just want to see where we are. Check we look level. If you were trying to set something up really accurate, you could draw your line up through the board you wanted. You could even put a square on the board, position the log. So one end done. Just trying to see how equal things look down the board. I can move things about. Move the wedge in that side. Just tightening up the bolt. Long way to go on that one. That's better. Got the one on the inside as well. Do there. Now from this point, I'm just checking how stable everything looks. Is it moving, wiggling? Seems pretty good. Trying to see where we are. That looks good. I think we'll give it a go. So we're on. Nice and gently. I've got to hurry up. I'm going to adjust my thrust wheel a little bit, bring that back in. Now 
so I don't know if you're noticing, I'm not even pushing the log. I'm pushing on the board. And there, just got to go to the far end, just want to pick up. Make sure we're on that roller stand a bit better. Yeah, that's better. Now I'm pushing the board on the end so my hands are nicely out of the way. You can see the blade where we just come out. Got a little bit to go. All the way through. Okay. Take off one half. Gonna want them back in place in a minute. But it's just making my life easier that I can drop this over. Move our dust. Now we've actually got something dead flat. So now we show you that's dead flat. I don't know if we can bend. Look at camera one for me. Wow. What do you reckon on that? That's pretty good. I'm impressed with that. Okay. I just want to play with the board a little bit now. So I'm going to bring this back. We could probably turn the extractor off for a couple of minutes. Um, and just gently undo the two bolts on there. Swing that round. So I'm just undoing these two. Moving them about a little bit, okay? So I've got them back facing me now, square edge. All right, this stage for a minute, let's have a feel, quite dry my bit of cherry, I've had it all summer, so I'm not surprised. Wanna convert it into blocks. So camera one, I think, bam, for a second. Doesn't matter which bit we go with, that one's probably better. Now you've got it to this, you've got a flat, you can put it down. We wanna create a straight edge down one side. That's not that difficult, this is quite good. Um, I'm just looking at where things are. I can easily now position it on the board. I've got a cut line to work to all the way down through past the length of the lug. So I can show you where I want to be. This side actually, better side to work off. I'm going, why is that a better side to work off? Because I want a three inch square. Am I going to get enough there? Let's have a look. I need my ruler. If not, I can play with my blocks and turn them back round. Let's see where we are. Now I'm checking for height to say when my three inch starts. I'm probably getting my head away in the way of the camera. Well, not a lot on this one. Okay. Can be right in there, I wonder. Might not go. Oh, might not be quite long enough. But of course, there is the other way we can work with this. Put that back in a minute. So you could use these as side stops to give you a location. I'm going to check the back end now. Got three inch there. I can see we're not over my line there. That, that, that's quite good. So at this stage, I can, you can do away with those for a minute. Let's see where we get here. So Ben's just going to put the air back on, I think. Going to move over just a tiny bit. I need to bring the guide system back up on there. Just checking a few things. I can hold the log a little bit of pressure this time. So we can see through now. So we get a flip. That's pretty good. have a quick look and see what we have inch there so what am I doing now measuring to the block we could use the fence on your bandsaw for what I'm going to do now slide our board back we're just going to set the log so we've got it up against our side stop so we've got a three inch square aiming for that's that 
just going to bring the height up so we can clear so adjusting that nicely that's good just checking things will go I've got half inch more let's go there right put the air on and put the bouncer on again I can hold things nicely now I can use my plywood sledge out support things just checking our height oh we're near there we come to a grinding halt in a sec there it is so we need to come up just a little bit clear the guide system that's a good thing all right trying to keep the guide nice and low supporting the work and supporting that blade so again feeding through We can stop it, let's take that one out of the way. I'm going to be really lazy now, but you could use your mantle fence for what I'm doing now. But I'm giving you the scope of what we've just set up. Got come down. Alright, so keep your guide nice and low to this, it'll make everything more accurate and safer. Alright, so just on there, just checking where we are quick look on from the end that looks okay so this is allowing me to cut three inch squares now again look so we can dimension stop this if we needed to Woo! salt and pepper mills so they're quite nice they oh, a lovely colour I don't know if you can see the car. Right. I go to here, look. Oh, talk about green. Okay. Not too wet at the moment. It's got a bit of damp to it. So, I think we go camera one, Ben. We lose the air, I think, for the extractor. So, hopefully, you're seeing that, first of all, by using something like the sledge that we built to go on the bandsaw there, how supported it is, how straight I can actually get something. Now we could rip this down into half inch boards, they're going to seize them really quickly, going to dry nice, you can stick them out. I'm taking something that's actually firewood and producing something that, oh, some nice cherry squares, fantastic. Or you've got maybe your bowl blank material, or okay, but just by using your bandsaw in that method of using a sledge. So a simple ply board, you've got those blocks we can put on, we can adjust different positions really useful tool the other nice thing is once you finish with it you can undo your block you can keep them somewhere nice and safe you can hang that on the wall it's there ready for you down beside the so your bandsaw get your next log in cut it up quite an easy way of converting a small log that like I said normally might be firewood something that people don't want but it allows you to Cater your own material, cut your own material to exactly what you want, and maybe take material that you can't buy. Um, I've done this with some plum. I can't go and buy it. It's not off the shelf. It's not readily available. I do see it, but once in a blue moon. If I can cut my own, fantastic. So find a tree that's come down, take it, plank it, convert it to whatever you want. That's a godsend, okay? So that's simple board. Didn't take us long. We made it with you. Those little bolts, all right? Hopefully you've enjoyed this, given you a bit of an insight into what possibly you could do with your bandsaw, how you can convert it from a log, blank material. So I've just got to figure out what to do with it now. Okay, we'll see you in a few weeks' time, probably. More with Work and Wisdom. If you've liked it, give us a thumbs up. Go and share it. Someone else might like to see this. Thank you very much, all right? Bye then.